Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Haven't talked a ton of Nebraska football as it pertains to the transfer portal over the last couple of days. And quite frankly, I think the major reason why is you look at this Nebraska roster, you take a look at the depth chart and say, I don't know how many positions that they need to go address in this spring transfer portal window. That is a common talking point we've had for the last couple of weeks. And that is this Nebraska roster is probably in the healthiest spot it has been in a very long time. You look top to bottom and say, we don't have many questions. We don't have many holes on this Nebraska roster. Now, that does not mean that Matt Rule will not look to bring a few players in. He's been very vocal that if there's an opportunity to make this Nebraska team better, he's going to be taking it in the transfer portal. But I also want to give Matt Rule a lot of credit for how he's going about building this roster where you see a lot of programs across the country almost just be like a revolving door with their college football programs. 20 guys come in one window, 20 guys come out, 20 guys come in, 20 guys come out. This Nebraska program has done a phenomenal job retaining its roster. And I think that's a lot of the focus that Nebraska has had during this transfer portal window is not necessarily going out and adding players from different programs, but retaining the guys that have been productive for this Nebraska program. You look across the country, you can point to almost every team that has lost a productive player, an impact player to the transfer portal. I look at this Nebraska program and say, what impact guy did they lose over the last couple of months to the transfer portal? And quite frankly, I think that answer is pretty much a, a, not a player that I can remember. And I think that speaks to Matt Rule and his philosophy in terms of attacking the transfer portal. I think they've played it really well. Want to talk about the commitment they landed. Talk about a few other players that Nebraska might be pursuing in the transfer portal. Before we get into it, as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. Massive shout out to the Nebraska fans. Y'all know I love talking this program. The amount of support y'all continue to show to the boys truly does mean a lot. We'll be spring. We'll be doing a preview to the spring game. We'll be immediately recapping the spring game. Really excited for the next couple of days. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly for the Nebraska fans, I want to have a conversation and I want to hear from you guys in terms of what positions you think Matt Rule might be addressing in the transfer portal over the next couple of days. I'll give you guys a few positions that I think Nebraska might be addressing, but I want to first get into the commitment they landed yesterday in Vincent Genetone. Now he's a Nebraska kid, and I, I look back at the athletic profile of him coming out of high school and say, how in the world did he leave the state of Nebraska and go play somewhere else? And I get it wasn't rated according to 24-7 sports. You had a guy that was a two-time state champ on the wrestling mat, runs a 10-5 in the 100-meter dash. He's 220 pounds, a 38-and-a-half-inch vertical. I'll tell you this. If Matt Rule was, current, was the coach of Nebraska at this time when this kid was coming out of high school, there is no doubt in my mind he's been a Nebraska Cornhusker for the last couple of years. These are the type of guys that Matt Rule loves. Maybe the underrated guys that don't get a ton of buzz from other Power 5 programs, but you look at the athletic profile this kid has. We just read it off. Wrestling background, elite track and field numbers with a big-time size, explosive 38.5-inch vertical. There is no shot. Matt Rule lets him out of the state of Nebraska. And so you look at this kid bringing him back to Nebraska, not only – do I love the athletic profile that Vincent brings to the table? I mean, that is some elite, elite athletic profile marks. But I think more importantly, I think that was a position that we might have had some question marks for this Nebraska program in terms of the off-ball linebacker spot. I think that's probably a position that is probably lacks the most depth heading into 2024. So you're able to do that with a preferred walk on a guy that – I am really excited about over the next couple of years. Again, these are the time of guys that Matt Rule has historically loved coming out of high school. I know he's coming from Montana, but you look at Matt Rule, the guys he's had success with going back to Templar Baylor. It's the guys that were kind of the diamond in the roughs, had elite, elite athletic markers. And Matt Rule says, hey, we're going to take you. We're going to develop you as a football player. And I think a lot of times Matt Rule doesn't overcomplicate the sport. I think a lot of times we overcomplicate the sport. 
when you are playing the game of football, it's a height, weight, speed game, right? If you have the bigger guys who are faster and more athletic and stronger, you're normally going to win a lot of football games. This is a guy that you just want to bet on, right? The size, the speed, the wrestling background, all things that I absolutely love in these kind of football players with the multi-sport backgrounds. I think this is a really exciting commitment. Really excited to see what his career trajectory looks like. There's been talk about him playing running back as well. Now, Another name that just hit the transfer portal yesterday afternoon that I think would be really interesting for Nebraska, a guy that they recruited out of high school, that's former four-star running back Dylan Edwards coming from Colorado. Had a really good true freshman year for Colorado. And I think what excites you the most about Dylan Edwards is he's kind of a different flavor in that running back room where he only averaged 2.53 yards after contact. He's not necessarily the running back that is working through contact, that physicality between the tackles. But at the end of the day, he is one of the most explosive playmakers really in all of college football. He's one of the purely fastest players in college football, but also does a really good job blending that short area quickness. Nebraska fans, I'm sure, are familiar with Dylan Edwards. Elite lead speed, elite change of direction, the elite ability to play in space. He's phenomenal catching the football out of the backfield. I kind of think of Dylan Edwards as that ultimate chess piece for an offense where he's probably not going to be a running back that gets 20 plus carries a game because he doesn't quite have the size to kind of make that happen. But you look at Dylan Edwards, Dante Dotto, two guys that are only going into their second years of college football in the same backfield for a couple of years for Nebraska. That is, in my mind, exactly how you want a running back room to look where Dante Dotto, he's your Mack truck. He's your guy going between the tackles, 20 plus carries a game. Dylan Edwards is your guy that you can have run routes out of the backfield motion out into the slot. He's a matchup nightmare. He gets man coverage with the linebacker coming out of the backfield, and he's going to make a big play happen. This is a guy that sometimes it's about the Jimmys and Joes, not the X's and O's. This is a guy that when you get the football into his hands, he can make those game-changing plays on offense that, quite frankly, you just didn't see enough of from that Nebraska offense in 2023. It sounds like Nebraska is going to be a player for Dylan Edwards, over the next couple of weeks in the transfer portal, I am fired up to see if they can make this one happen. Now, now I want to get into the discussion of other positions we might see Nebraska add. And again, the focus for Matt Rule has been on retaining this roster, and he's done a phenomenal job of it. If Nebraska was to add maybe two or three more players, I'm asking you guys first, and then I'll give you my take. What players would that be? I think one, and this is kind of a sneaky one that I think Nebraska fans might disagree with, but I'm going to go with it anyways, the inside of the defensive line. And you look at why would I say that when they have arguably one of the best interior defensive line duos that you see in the country in Nash and Ty Robinson. And I said, the depth, like what is Nebraska? Nebraska wants to win games in November. They struggled in that month last year. I look at the depth on the inside of that Nebraska defensive line and say, I think they could add a few players. Now, don't get me wrong. You're not going to add anybody that's starting over Nash and Ty Robinson, but having a third and fourth defensive lineman that you feel really comfortable about that can give you those good reps, especially in the Big Ten Conference, that's massive. I always think back to my Michigan Wolverines and say, what made that defensive line so special in 2023? Yes, they had some star power, right? Guys like Mason Graham, Kenny Graham, Chris Jenkins. They also were extremely deep. They had five, six guys that were NFL caliber players on the inside of that defensive line. That really, in my mind, was the recipe for Michigan being so good up front. I think that could potentially be a an avenue for Nebraska to really maximize this team heading into 2024. I look on the offense and say, I mean, we obviously love the young quarterback situation, did a phenomenal job in the pass catcher room. Offensive line has bodies. Offensive line is deep. I think this is going to be one of the better offensive lines that we see for Nebraska football in a very long time. You look to the defense, a lot of returning production coming back. I've heard the secondary get kicked around as a potential spot to add. I personally would probably disagree with that. I think this Nebraska secondary is very good. A added depth on the inside of the defensive line, again, a position where you rotate a lot of guys in anyway. So it's not like you're, I mean, replacing somebody. Guys are going to play up front. I mean, outside of that, 
I love this. I think this Nebraska team's in a really good spot. And the transfer portal at the end of the day is not how Matt Rule wants to build this roster. Yes, he's going to find those guys that elevate his team, like the Jamal Banks, the Dante Dados, the Isaiah Nayors. But at the end of the day, Matt Rule knows how he wants to build this program. And that is allocating a lot of his roster spots to the kids at the high school ranks. We'll see. What Matt Rule decides to do, we'll obviously continue to cover a couple days from now. We'll do our spring game preview. We'll obviously watch the game this Saturday. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. Again, all the support y'all continue to show truly does mean a lot. And we'll talk to y'all later.